So I think it's safe to say Tesla stock is literally crashing. At the time of recording this video, Tesla stock is down about 1% in overnight trading. But I don't think it's safe to say it's only Tesla. A lot of other stocks are getting absolutely destroyed. What's coming next? There's something that is very important that you need to know. And something big that happened today that is quite concerning. But let's put this all into context. Should you be fearful? Should you not be? Should you be buying the dip? Should you not be? By the end of this video, you're going to have a much better understanding of number one, when is the stock going to bottom? What do we need to see happen to see Tesla stock bottom? I, I, I think that's probably the biggest question that everyone has out there. And there's a very clear answer to this. Number two, should you be buying Tesla stock now? And when could the selling stop? Those are three questions you will get answers to here in this video. So let's go ahead and get straight into it. But first, before we do, we got some high quality H2O because we're saving all of our money to buy the dip in Tesla that keeps on dipping. But nonetheless, let's dive into it. Let's start off with what happened today with Tesla stock that is quite concerning. Tesla stock broke under its 100 day moving average did not see a bounce and closed below that. And it closed below that by quite a decent amount. Your 100-day moving average is at $220.23. Tesla stock closed in after hours at $217.69. What you would want to have seen is maybe a test of that level. You bounce at that level and close higher. Or even a test at all. Even if you closed under, if you could have bounced at that level, that would have been a pretty good sign. That did not happen. And it highlights a deeper problem that's going on with the markets and with Tesla stock. And to fully understand what's happening in the markets right now, you need to understand market psychology. I have spent years studying market psychology because you can read a balance sheet. You can read earnings calls. You can study companies fundamentally and i highly suggest you do and if you do you're going to be quite excited about what you see with tesla specifically just just a side note but that doesn't matter what matters is the market psychology and let me explain exactly why this is a term it's my favorite term in the entire stock market the markets can handle bad news they cannot handle uncertainty. Now, with that being said, let me break down what's happening across the world right now. Number one, Europe's already in a recession. Okay, so we already know they're in a recession. Things are not great. China looks like they're heading into a recession. We don't know how much they're going to stimulate. Are they going to try to stimulate their way out of this? Are they going to do whatever they have to do? to prevent a deep recession or maybe even a depression if deflation continues. What's the Japanese central bank about to do? Are they going to actually start raising rates? Their inflation report just came in today and it was much higher than expectations. Is that going to pull money out of US markets into Japan's markets? How bad is our recession going to be? Are we going to have a recession in the US? Is the Fed going to pause? Are they going to raise rates one more time? Are they going to raise rates until something breaks? You get my point here. There's a lot of uncertainty. The only certain thing we really know is Europe is in a recession and things are not good. And the markets were doing fine with that. Europe has been in a recession for a long time, ever since the banking crisis started in Q1. The markets can handle bad news, but they cannot handle all of this uncertainty because then we don't know how to value stocks. We don't know how to assess the situation. And a good example of this is Target earnings. I have Target pulled up on the screen here. Target hasn't been doing good for a while. But what happened? Target's earnings came out worse than expectations. But we already expected it. It was bad. And what happened? Target stock went up 3% yesterday, up about 10% at one point, and up another 1% today. On terrible earnings, they cut guidance, wash out terrible quarter, and the stock went higher. 
That's because we're getting a little bit of clarity. The markets can see through the other side and see that things are probably going to get better from here. At least that's the market's perception. So point in being, you can make this example case by case over and over again, but it's pretty clear. The markets can handle bad news. The markets cannot handle uncertainty. If you would like more definitive proof of this, take a look at what happened during the global financial crisis. GDP bottomed out in Q2 of 2009. What happened to the S&P 500 during this time? Well, you got that first initial drop towards the end of 2008 in Q3 around September of 2008, and you really hit this plateau, this kind of bottomed plateau ever since then, right? From about October of 2008, you stayed here until February of 2009, and then you've seen a brief little final dip, and then you recovered. And before GDP had even hit its lowest point, the markets had started to rally. Technically, GDP hit its... Uh, lowest point around right here and the markets were already on their way up because the markets had seen the bad news come fully digested it and said things are going to get better from here things are not all doom and gloom and stocks rallied now when you add all of this uncertainty to the fact that the 10-year treasury is breaking out to a new high of this cycle which makes credit card payments more expensive. It makes auto loans more expensive. It makes your mortgage more expensive. Anything that has to do with borrowing money more expensive, well, that's also not great to add into the mix of uncertainty. And these things are all having an effect on the markets. But Tesla is in a very unique situation because Tesla has probably the most uncertainty that any stock has out there because on top of all of these market uncertainties we have that is affecting the broader markets tesla is also cutting prices every couple of weeks or every couple of months quite a few times in 2023 so markets don't know where margins are going to bottom out so markets don't know if the stock's cheap expensive they don't know what to do but you usually follow the trend. So the trend has been Tesla's cutting prices and margins are going lower. Until we see a period of time where Tesla is no longer cutting prices, the stock just won't do well in the short term. Now, based on the performance we have seen recently, it looks like Tesla might be ready to cut prices again. If that happens, especially in the US, things are going to get even worse in the short term. And I hope Hope they do, and I hope you're not betting for the opposite. I hope that you are fully ready to buy the dip and to make as much money as possible because that's what I want for every single one of you guys. I make these videos. I don't expect them to get to get views. We're talking about the broad markets, boring stuff to a lot of people. Hopefully, you can profit off of this information. And if Tesla stock does fall, that gives you more money to potentially make next year. Things are going to look a lot better my opinion, in 2024 for Tesla as we start deliveries of the Cybertruck, uh, so on and so forth, the refreshed Model 3, and hopefully get the V12 addition to FSD, these things are all huge catalysts. Licensing of full self-driving. There's so many reasons to be long in Tesla stock right now. It's ridiculous. And this is your opportunity. But again, with that being said, there's a lot of uncertainty where Tesla is going to stop cutting prices. Now, Along the same lines of what I just said, right? If we get a period where Tesla does not cut prices, the stock can rally. Even though margins are lower now than they were a year ago or six months ago, markets can handle bad news. They can't handle uncertainty. Point in being, take a look at Tesla stock. What happened since they stopped cutting prices in about May? Well... Tesla stock went from 170 to 300. <laughs> I think this speaks for itself. I really don't think I need to be the one to say it. This is what's affecting Tesla. So on top of the broad market uncertainties, you have Tesla specific uncertainties. Again, the markets cannot handle uncertainty. They can handle 
bad news. So this makes for a potentially dangerous situation for Tesla stock, especially if you have call options or something that is leveraged to the upside. It could get worse from here, especially what we've seen today with Tesla stock showing no respect around the 100-day moving average. Now, the next biggest catalyst that we have for Tesla as well as the broader markets is NVIDIA earnings. That's going to be on August 23rd in After Hours. That is next Wednesday. You also have the Jackson Hole Economic Symposium, which I don't expect to be as big of an event just because I don't expect Powell to flip the script completely on us. I don't think we're going to get a super hawkish Powell. I, I, th I think it's going to be a lot of the same things. We need to be data dependent. I don't think that is going to be the reason why the markets fall at this point. If the markets fall, it's because the economy is going into recession and there's the same thing with China, right? Economy going into recession and there's uncertainty around that. Now, ultimately, I do don't really think there's going to be a deep recession. I, I I don't even know if there's going to be a recession. I think a lot of that comes down to student loan repayments. And that could prolong this situation. There could be uncertainty for a while. But the biggest catalyst that could cause the markets to fall dramatically is NVIDIA earnings. Again, that's next Wednesday. Now, I don't really have high hopes for NVIDIA earnings. I don't really expect great things. And what I mean is, I actually expect NVIDIA is going to have good earnings. But I think the markets are expecting something that is far too unrealistic. The markets are expecting another guidance raise. NVIDIA to be on everything. That's what you need to see NVIDIA go up another 20% from here. You need to see a crazy guidance raise and reassurance that AI is alive. What you have seen from other companies, from other chip makers or other AI names, is things have been pretty good, but not nearly to NVIDIA's size and scale. A lot of companies are not seeing any benefit from AI. AMD, for an example, revenues were down 8% year over year. That's not very hypey. That's not a great reason to be in a lot of AI stocks. So I think the expectations are just too high for NVIDIA. And I think that's when you could get bigger downside in the markets. Now, you're going to be approaching September at that time. August 23rd, pretty close to September. August and September tend to be really bad months for the markets, just historically. And also, the... August and September before an election tends to be even worse. So that makes a lot of sense why this August has been so rough so far. So we have answered two questions out of three so far that we outlined in the beginning of this video. Number one question we answered of what's going on to the markets. What's going on with Tesla? Why are stocks falling and why is Tesla falling so much? We've answered that. We've answered the timeline of what's the next biggest events for the markets. Now, obviously, there's things that could happen that we can't forecast. But from what we can tell, from what we know, Jackson Hole is going to be important. But NVIDIA earnings is really going to be the event that could change the markets. That could cause stocks to really sell off or actually catch a rebound just based on AI and how deep that has actually affected our markets. I think it's pretty safe to say if NVIDIA has bad earnings or the stock falls, it is going to have such a big impact on the markets. It's going to be ridiculous. Okay, so those are kind of the two things. And with the second one, this could last a while. I, I don't expect if NVIDIA has great earnings and stocks rebound for a little while, it's over. We still have massive uncertainties around the world, not just the world, but with the U.S. Recession, Fed, those are still uncertainties that will be around. But if we do go through that big sell-off after NVIDIA earnings, that might start to mark a, bo a bottom, okay? That might start to mark an actual bounce. Some of the uncertainties, we can get over those maybe at lower prices. The third thing that we need to answer is where is Tesla stock going from here? This is where things get tricky. The other things are pretty easy to see. 
as far as where Tesla goes, there's multiple different things that could happen. In one scenario, we could see the economy deteriorate, we could see the world deteriorate, and we could see Tesla cutting prices. Again, in that scenario, well, Tesla stock could certainly fall to 150 around there. In, give it five or ten dollars, 160 to 140 in that range. That would be like really, really bad. Really bad. Well, there's the possible outcome that Tesla does not cut prices, but the economy and the world go to shit. Excuse my language if you don't like that. In that scenario, and the markets do fall, your 170 to 180 looks pretty reasonable to me. Just based on a correlation between Tesla and the broader markets. And let's go ahead and put this into a little bit of numbers. If the markets, if if Tesla were to fall to about 180, that would be downside of about 17.5%. That would mean roughly half of that. That could mean downside of of eight and a half, nine percent for the S&P from here, which is possible. That would be a, a total decline of about 13 and a half percent from the peak to that ultimate low. That's definitely possible. Now, there is the third outcome where Tesla does not cut prices. The economy does not go down the toilets. And I think this is the most unlikely. Let's be honest. The most unlikely scenario is if Tesla does not cut prices at all anymore and the economy just does perfectly fine, that this is all a huge over-exaggeration. In that case, I still think the markets have a lot of uncertainty until we get through events and it's very possible Tesla stock could fall to around $200, in between $210 and $200. I think that's the least likely. I actually think the most likely is a little bit of all of this. Possibly Tesla cuts prices again. At least that's kind of what we would could infer from what's happening with the stock. Odds are the economy is not perfect. Odds are the Fed does raise rates too aggressive. And they always do. And then they're too late to start cutting rates. And we do, do go through some form of slowdown. Say Tesla to the moon. <laughs> Thank you. So I think the most likely outcome is actually a little bit of all of this, to be 100% honest with you. So that's kind of what I'm looking at right now. Let me know where you think Tesla is going to bottom out at. If you are actively buying the dip in Tesla stock today, let me know as well what kind of hedges you have on the markets as well as Tesla stock right now. If you guys would like to come trade with me live in real time every time I make a trade, come hedge out your portfolio so you're not sitting on your hands and watching your portfolios die. Linked down below in the description of this video. You guys enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you in the next one.